Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss those topics with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and you can press this bell icon so that you can be notified whenever we come up with some new video. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes which can be helpful for you. And we also put the updates for all our upcoming videos over here. So now let's move on to first question which says, what does it refer to? So we have to read these two statements and I, I identify the concept being talked about. So the first one says, it's a business where an entity acquires the receivables of another at a discount and realize it from the entities that owe the money. And the second one says, it helps the company to monetize its receivables quickly and tackle the cash flow problems. So what's this business which is being talked about? See, at times the companies sell their goods at a credit on a credit basis and not receive the money instantly. Moreover, they might render some services for which they might receive the payments later on. So when these goods or services are provided, uh, where the payments are received are receivable in future, then a bill is issued to such customers to repay it at a future date. But what happens if a business is providing the goods and is not getting the cash immediately, then it might have the problem of not having enough funding available. Now the business needs money for its day-to-day -day operations. Okay, if it is not having enough cash, enough uh, cash in hand, then it might have problems in conducting those business activities. So when these payments get delayed, then the businesses suffer a lot. So in order to solve this problem, there is a concept wherein some other entity, it purchases the receivables. Receivables are what? These are basically the bills which the company issues to those customers who are buying your goods or taking the services on a credit basis, who will repay later. So it's an evidence that they have to pay you the payment later on. So when this receivable is basically issued, then the business uh, uh, might face the cash flow problem. So what it can do, it can sell these receivables to some other entity and that entity will pay, pay you the money and realize those uh, uh, those uh, amount from the person who owe them. So what will happen in this? You have sold your customers to good sell on credit. You don't get the money later. You don't get the money later. You have immediate cash need. So you can sell the receivables to the discount. You can sell the discount to some entity. It will give you cash to it. And the receivable amount will be paid later on to the person who owes the money. It will be realized. So what do we call such a business? That business is known as Factoring. So answer is option D. Factoring में होता है कि आप अपने receivables किसी और entity को sell कर देते हो at a discounted rate and that entity will make you the payment of money and realize that money from the person who owes later on. So why I am discussing factoring right now? Because a bill has been amended which is related to factoring and we are going to cover that bill. So a brief intro of factoring was important for this. So factoring regulation amendment bill. Let's see what's the news now. So MSMEs persistently face the payment delays from large clients, a hurdle somewhat smoothed by factoring business. So the Factoring Regulation Act aims to support this sector. I have told you that there is a payment delay which is why businesses suffer. So MSMEs are facing this problem a lot where their pay payments are getting delayed and they are not having enough cash flows available. Enough funding is not available to MSMEs because they sell some of the credit and they get a delay in the payment and they don't get the payment. In this case, factoring business can help that they sell their receivables. So this bill which is basically in news these days, which has recently been passed, uh, is going to support this forfeiting business, this for factoring business. Sorry. So Lok Sabha recently passed the Factoring Regulation Amendment Bill. Earlier we had Factoring Regulation Act. We'll discuss what was there in this act and how this bill, which has come up now, is an improvement over that. Okay. So before that, let's just cover these points related to factoring once again. As I've already told you, it's a business where entity acquires the receivables of another entity known as the assigner for certain amount 
and the factors factors are those businesses which acquire your receivables and make you the payment and later recover them from the person who owes that money so those factors acquire the receivables of a company at a discount and realize them from the entities that owe the money jaise ki maine abhi aapse ye discuss kiya this helps the company to monetize its receivables quickly and tackle the cash flow problems so jaldi se jaldi aapko un receivables ke badle cash mil jayega aur aapki jo funding ki problem hai wo solve ho jayegi ना फैक्ट्रिंग जो है वो मैन्युअली भी किया जा सकता है और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्लेटफॉर्म्स के थ्रू भी एक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्लेटफॉर्म जो है वो है ट्रेडिंग जो ये इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्लेटफॉर्म है इसको हम कहते हैं ट्रेडिंग रिसीवेबल्स डिस्काउंटिंग सिस्टम जहाँ आपके ये जो ट्रेड रिसीवेबल्स है जो ये बिल्ड रिसीवेबल्स है ये डिस्काउंट होते हैं जो आप डेटर्स को इशू करते हो आर एक्स आई एल इन्फोए स्मार्ट एम वन एक्सचेंज ये कुछ ऐसे ऑनलाइन फैक्ट्रिंग प्लेटफॉर्म है फैक्ट्रिंग कैन बी डन बोथ मैनुअली एज वेल एज इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली and that electronic exchange is called trades and these are the names of some online factoring platforms now factoring helps small firms to manage their working capital cycle see for day to day needs they need funding so that funding problem for small firms can be solved through factoring when msme suppliers have to wait long for payments they sell the purchase invoices to factoring businesses and these businesses buy them at a discount and get the money and msmes get the money quickly so ye jo pura process maine discuss kiya ye summed up hai last statement mein all right so ye tha hamara factoring ka concept ab hum dekhte hain ki is jo ye jo bill aaya hai isme kya naya hai vis a vis our previous factoring regulation act so jo pehle wali factoring regulation act thi वो कहती थी कि आर सिर्फ कुछ ही एन को ऑथराइजेशन देगा कि वो फैक्ट्रिंग बिजनेस में इन्वॉल्व हो सकती हैं और वो वो एन होंगी जिनका प्रिंसिपल बिजनेस ही फैक्ट्रिंग है प्रिंसिपल बिजनेस से मेरा मतलब है कि जहां उनके आधे असेट्स या आधी इनकम ही फैक्ट्रिंग बिजनेस से आती है वो ही एन जो है सिर्फ वही फैक्ट्रिंग बिजनेस में हो सकती हैं सो फैक्ट्रिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट सेज दैट आर विल ऑथोराइज only those nbfcs whose principal business is factoring and when we say that the principal business is factoring when half of the asset or income earned is in the factoring business so this was the requirement of factoring regulation act and according to this around 7 nbfcs were there only which were providing this factoring businesses so there was a need to expand the coverage to have more entities being able to provide such services and thus this bill has come up which has recently been passed as well so the bill seeks to liberalize the participation of nbfcs in factoring business aur nbfcs ko liberty di jayegi ki wo bhi is business mein aa sakti hai to is bill ne jo ye purani threshold thi isko remove kar diya hai aur ye kaha hai ki wo nbfcs जो ये रिक्वायरमेंट मेट नहीं कर पाती वो भी अब इस बिजनेस में आ सकती हैं तो अराउंड 9,000 से ज्यादा एन भी अब फैक्टरिंग बिजनेस की फैक्टरिंग uh, बिजनेस में आएंगी और ये सर्विसेज एन एम एस एम को वो प्रोवाइड करेंगी सो दिस अमेंडमेंट हैज ओपन अप द सेक्टर टू अदर एन बी एफ सीज फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन फैक्टरिंग बिजनेस एज वेल एज इन दिन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फैक्टरिंग ओके सो दैट प्रॉब्लम हैज बीन सॉल्व बाई दिस अमेंडमेंट बिल सो वॉट बेनिफिट इज इट गोइंग टू ऑफर अब हमने अभी तक जो डिस्कशन किया फैक्टरिंग के बारे में उससे हमें थोड़ा तो आइडिया लग गया कि क्या बेनिफिट हो सकते हैं एम को सपोर्ट मिलेगा ठीक है उनके पास फंडिंग अवेलेबल नहीं थी तो अब फंडिंग अवेलेबल होगी पैसा अवेलेबल होगा तो उनका बिजनेस अच्छा वो कंडक्ट कर पाएंगे अच्छे वे में उनकी जो पेमेंट्स डिले होती थी वो स्मूथ हो जाएंगी वो जल्दी रिकवर हो जाएंगी उनको कैश फ्लो के हिसाब से प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं रहेंगी सो नाउ सी देम पॉइंट बाय पॉइंट ओके दी व्हाट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन दिस इज ओनली डिस्कस्ड इन दीज बेनिफिट्स सो फर्स्ट बेनिफिट इज दे विल सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ स्ट्रेचड पेमेंट साइकिल जो पेमेंट में डिले होता था द डिले इन पेमेंट दैट विल रिड्यूस बिकॉज यू आर यू विल गेट द मनी रिकवर्ड फ्रॉम यू विल गेट द मनी फ्रॉम दीज फैक्टर्स एंड दे विल लेटर रिकवर इट फ्रॉम वन टू ओ so vibrant factoring industry will make financing smooth for msmes ab msme or small businesses ko jo funding ki problem hoti thi jo finance unko available nahi hota tha that problem will be solved kyunki unhe jald se jald un receivables ke badle paise mil jayenge if the small firms are financially healthy it will improve their ability to purchase from large producers and if they are able to purchase from large producers they will it will help in repairing the supply chain which is disrupted due to the pandemic ऑलरेडी एम एस एम ई की पेमेंट वैसे ही डिले होती थी पैंडमिक ने उसको और एक बिग बूज दिया और प्रॉब्लम्स आई ठीक है सप्लाई चेन डिस्टर्ब हो गई वो इतना ईजिली गुड सर्विस प्रोवाइड नहीं कर पा रहे हैं क्योंकि उनके पास बिजनेस कंडक्ट करने के लिए फंडिंग नहीं है सो so, अगर ये स्मॉल फर्म्स के पास ये फैक्ट्रिंग की सर्विसेज ईजिली अवेलेबल होंगी उनके पास पैसा अवेलेबल होगा वो ईजिली गुड्स 
रॉ मटेरियल परचेज कर सकते हैं प्रोड्यूसर से उन्हें प्रोड्यूस कर सकते हैं एंड फाइनली दिस सप्लाई चेन में जो ये डिसरप्शन हुई है पैंडमिक की वजह से वो भी सॉल्व हो सकती है इंक्रीज सप्लाई ऑफ फंड अवेलेबल टू स्मॉल बिजनेसिस ओके दिस मे रिजल्ट इन ब्रिंगिंग डाउन दी कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड इनेबल ग्रेटर एक्सेस टू क्रेडिट स्टाफ स्मॉल बिजनेस इंश्योर टाइमली पेमेंट्स अगेंस्ट रिसीवेबल्स सो ये एम एस एम ईज को टाइमली पेमेंट्स दिलाने में उनकी क्रेडिट प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करने में सब में हेल्प करेगी मोर प्लेयर्स इन फैक्ट्रिंग बिजनेस आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू इम्प्रूव कॉम्पिटिशन एंड एफिशियंसी टिल नाउ वी हैड अराउंड जस्ट सेवन एन बी एफ सीज प्रोवाइडिंग दिस सर्विस नाउ इफ मोर एन बी एफ सीज आर एंट्रिंग दे विल बी मोर कॉम्पिटिशन सो इट्स बेटर फॉर दी कस्टमर्स हु आर अवेलिंग सच फैक्ट्रिंग सर्विसेज इट विल इम्प्रूव दी एफिशियंसी ऑल दिस इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू ओपन अप दी अपॉर्चुनिटी इन दी बिजनेस टू मोर नॉन बैंक लेंडर्स एट अ टाइम वेन स्मॉल बैंक स्मॉल बिजनेस आर ऑलरेडी फेसिंग फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेस ड्यू टू पैंडमिक अब पैंडमिक की वजह से ऑलरेडी बहुत फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेस है जिसकी वजह से आर बी आई ने काफ़ी सपोर्ट मेजर्स लिए एम एस एम ई की तरफ तो ये एक और मेजर है जिसमें ज्यादा एन बी एफ सीज अवेलेबल होंगे एम एस एम ईज की नीड्स फुलफिल करने के लिए सो दीज आर यू बेनिफिट विच दिस अमेंडमेंट इज गोइंग टू ऑफर ना वॉट्स दी इम्पॉर्टेंस सी द बेनिफिट is the importance as well because the msme sector the small businesses they play a major role in the economy this amendment bill can really be helpful for them and will give a big boost to our economy because these small business support manufacturing uh, exports okay they contribute a lot to the manufacturing output to the exports to the gdp uh, they generate a lot of employment so all these this because this sector is so important that's why we need to provide it the support isliye ye bill aaya isliye hi ye bill important hai okay so this was all about this bill we already answered the first question that the answer was factoring now moving to second question related to this only factoring amendment factoring regulation amendment bill seeks to liberalize the participation of nbfcs in factoring business so what uh, what of uh, not what which of the following benefits is um, this bill going to offer so it's going to offer all these four benefits i have just discussed them so answer is option e Okay, you can read them once again. All the benefits which I discussed, they have only only been covered over here. Now moving to next topic and next question of the day. So this is another bill which has been. Um, this is another amendment to some other bill through some other bill. Let's discuss this amendment as well. IBC Amendment Bill 2021 offers a simplified version of the Insolvency Bankruptcy Code that saves time. cost of bankruptcy proceedings for the small businesses in distress through a resolution scheme unlike the earlier resolution process debtors remain in the control of the distressed firm during this very scheme so you have to identify the scheme we already have the insolvency bankruptcy code in place which makes use of the corporate insolvency resolution plan okay the firms which are not able to repay the debt they will be covered under this resolution plan and then the proceedings will go on a insolvency professional will help in the recovery and making sure that the payments reach lend reach the lenders but what happens in this very case is that when you are uh, involved in cirp that is corporate insolvency resolution process then the investors might take over your new business okay or insolvency professionals might take over that business that business is no more in the control of debtors the corporate debtors who owe money जो पैसा ओ करते हैं जिन जो इंसॉलमेंट हो गए पैसा रीपे नहीं कर पाए उनसे वो बिजनेस ले लिया जाता है उनके अंदर उस बिजनेस का कंट्रोल नहीं रहता लेकिन जो इस अमेंडमेंट बिल में नई रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम आई है उसमें कंट्रोल जो है एग्जिस्टिंग कॉपरेट डेटर्स के पास ही रहेगा सो so, इस नई स्कीम को हम क्या कहते हैं दी आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन ए इट्स कॉल दी प्री पैक रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम ओके और दी प्री पैक इंसॉलवेंसी resolution plan so let's discuss a bit about this bill and this plan the bill to amend the ibc was tabled in lok sabha and has recently been passed so it offers a simplified version of ibc which will save time and cost of bankruptcy proceedings for small businesses through a prepackaged solution so we'll see how this prepackaged solution will help in saving time and cost it's a informal way of stitching together the corporate rescue plan and for which the seal of approval will be taken by the tribunal so yahan pe pehle hi kuch agreement ho jayegi informally aur baad mein tribunal ka approval liya jayega so informal ke baad wo formal ki taraf jata hai aur overall time aur cost bachata hai ye plan so let's see what is this prepack scheme or plan the prepack 
is the resolution of debt of a distressed company through an agreement between secured creditors and investors instead of a public bidding process. Unlike the case of CIRP, which is the Corporate Insolvency Resolution Plan, debtors remain in control of their distressed firm during the pre-PAC Insolvency Resolution Plan, that is PIRP. Alright, so let's see what happens. Suppose there is a firm who has taken a debt but is not able to repay that debt. Okay, we'll call it a corporate debtor. Okay, then we have a creditor who has provided the loan to this firm but that firm has not been able to repay back the loan. So what will happen in this prepack plan? An investor who has the money and is willing to invest will agree with this creditor to invest in this firm. Okay, so there will be no public bidding for purchase of this firm or for taking up the assets of this firm to make sure that it runs in a better manner to be able to repay the creditor. Rather, the creditor and investor will agree that uh, the investor will invest in the firm and when the firm starts running in a better manner, it generates some profit, it will repay the debt of this creditor. So, what is happening in this? A firm has not repaid the debt of the creditor that has been paid from this creditor. ठीक है और कोई इन्वेस्टर है जो जिसके पास पैसा है वो पैसा इन्वेस्ट करने को रेडी है तो ये क्रेडिटर और इन्वेस्टर आपस में अग्री करेंगे कि ये इन्वेस्टर इस फर्म में पैसा इन्वेस्ट करेगा और जब ये फर्म अच्छा रन करने लगेगी पैसा जनरेट करेगी तो ये डेट इस क्रेडिटर की वापस रीपे कर दी जाएगी यहाँ हम पब्लिक बिडिंग प्रोसेस के थ्रू नहीं जा रहे जो ज़्यादा टाइम टेकिंग है ओके सो इनफॉर्मली क्रेडिटर और इन्वेस्टर अग्री कर लेते हैं और बाद में जाके इस अग्रीमेंट को अप्रूवल मिल जाएगा ट्रिब्यूनल से तो इस केस में क्या होगा इस फर्म अगर पब्लिक बिडिंग होती तो जो फर्म टेक ओवर करती वो पूरा बिजनेस ले लेती ओके एग्जिस्टिंग कॉपरेट डेटर के हाथ में जो एग्जिस्टिंग पर्सन है जिसने लोन ले रखा है उसके हाथ में वो बिजनेस नहीं रहता अब इस प्रीपैक प्लान में क्या होगा कि बिजनेस ये इसी के पास रहेगा उसके उसका ही कंट्रोल रहेगा दिस इज द बेनिफिट ऑफ दिस स्कीम अंडर द प्रीपैक स्कीम द फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स विल अग्री टू द टर्म्स विद पोटेंशियल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड सीक द अप्रूवल ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन प्लान लेटर ऑन फ्रॉम द एन सी एल टी ट्रिब्यूनल ओके लेटर ऑन ये जो अग्रीमेंट इन्होंने किया है इन्वेस्टर और क्रेडिटर ने वो अप्रूव वो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान के लिए जो ये अग्रीमेंट हुआ है इसको बाद में एन सी एल टी के थ्रू अप्रूव करा दिया जाएगा Unlike the general bankruptcy provisions, proprietors or major shareholders of a small business do not lose operational control uh, once the prepack insolvency scheme commences. So, here the existing shareholders, hai, proprietors, hai, this firm, ke, unka control us firm se nahi jayega. This is very important for small businesses because the best person to run the firm are the experts in that business, are its proprietors. Are also getting outsiders to run businesses might be a difficult task. अगर कोई और आपकी firm आके ले लेता है, तो वो हो सकता है persons को lay off करेगा, okay? They will because of which people might lose the employment. Then if a new firm takes over the, if a new person takes over the firm, then there will be problems. That customers might not find that firm to be reliable anymore. Okay, so it will lose out on its customer. It might uh, lose out on the contracts with the suppliers. So because of which the business will suffer. If the business stays in the operational control of the existing proprietor only, then these problems can be solved and the business will continue to run because of which this prepack scheme is important. The idea is to ensure quicker, cost-effective, value-maximizing outcomes for all stakeholders in a manner which is least disruptive to the continuity of their business which preserves the jobs. Moving ahead now, how will this scheme work? So an MSME which has not met the payment obligation of this threshold would either on its own initiate a bankruptcy resolution scheme with the approval of lenders or 66% lenders can also do so. So what they are saying that there is a threshold like if MSMEs uh, are not able to repay amount minimum of 10 lakh not exceeding 1 crores then they can apply for a resolution plan under this scheme. Okay. Uh, for that they need the approval of lenders or lenders can themselves initiate the scheme. So, if you have to repay the amount of 10 lakhs which you have not repaid but overall amount of 1 crore should not be more than 1 crore. In that case, you have to apply for this plan 
वर्क आउट कर सकते हो अपने इस अपने जो इंसॉल्वेंसी का केस है उसको रिजॉल्व करवा सकते हो इसके लिए आपको लेंडर्स का अप्रूवल चाहिए या फिर 66 परसेंट लेंडर्स जिसको डेड जिनको डेड रिकवर नहीं हुई है वो भी इस प्रोसेस को इनिशिएट कर सकते हैं सो अंडर द स्कीम द लेंडर्स हैव दी एक्सटेंसिव ओवर साइड बट द बिजनेस इन डिस्ट्रेस इंजॉयज मोरिटोरियम फ्रॉम ऑल रिकवरी प्रोसीडिंग एंड रिमेन्स इन द कंट्रोल ऑफ द ऑपरेशन सो देर देर आर नो डिस्ट्रप्शन टू द बिजनेस एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट एज आई जस्ट डिस्कस्ड so it's informal to up, up to a point till there is an agreement between the creditor and the investor and later on when it's approved by ncert it becomes a formal thing so what are the benefits why do we need prepacks because the existing corporate insolvency resolution plan was quite time taking jo humne cirp ke bare mein padha humne insolvency bankruptcy court ke bare mein padha hai wahan pe 270 days plus few days for your or your proceedings is required so 330 days lag jate hain uske resolution mein okay so in december 2020 around many cases were there out of which 86% crossed the threshold of time which was specified in cirp so this problem can be solved through this prepack plan ओके जो ये डिले होता था ये डिले होता था क्योंकि बिडिंग होती थी और इसमें काफी टाइम चला जाता था नाउ दिस प्रॉब्लम कैन बी सॉल्व एंड क्विकर रेजोल्यूशन इज पॉसिबल बाय प्री पैक प्री पैक में अराउंड 120 डेज लगेंगे और उसके बाद एनसीएलटी की अप्रूवल के लिए अराउंड 90 डेज सो टाइम विल बी रिड्यूस्ड व्हिच इज टेकन टू रिजॉल्व द मैटर ओके बिसाइड्स ऑफरिंग अ वे ऑफ एमएसएमई टू रीस्ट्रक्चर द डेट द प्री पैक स्कीम विल रिड्यूस द बर्डन ऑन द बेंचेस ऑफ एनसीएलटी ऑफरिंग अ फास्टर मैकेनिज्म ऑलराइट सो नेक्स्ट बेनिफिट इज इट विल मिनिमाइज द डिस्ट्रप्शंस टू द बिजनेस जैसे कि मैंने डिस्कस किया कि अगर जो कंट्रोल है वो एग्जिस्टिंग जो भी प्रोपराइटर्स थे शेयर होल्डर्स थे उनके पास ही रहेगा तो बिजनेस में प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं आएंगी इतनी क्योंकि अगर नया पर्सन उसको टेक ओवर करता है हो सकता है वो एम्प्लॉयज को ले ऑफ करेगा सप्लायर्स के साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स तोड़ के नए सप्लायर्स के साथ एंटर करेगा या सप्लायर्स उसके साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में एंटर नहीं करना चाहेंगे कस्टमर्स लूज आउट कर सकता है बिजनेस जो इन्वेस्टर्स थे वो उस फर्म को छोड़ के जाना चाहेंगे सो इस वजह से बिजनेस सफर करता है ये सब प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाएंगी इस प्री पैक वाली चीज से Existing management retains the control, which will solve all the problems of disruptions of business associated with retaining the employees, suppliers, customer, investors. So these are few benefits which it's going to offer. So this was um, all about this topic. So the answer to this first question we already discussed. The third question was prepack resolution scheme. Now coming to last question related to this only, which of the following are correctly related to PIRP introduced in this bill? First is correctly related. Okay, uh, it's a resolution of debt through an agreement between secured creditors and investors. Second and third are incorrect. Second says it takes more time vis-a-vis -vis CIRP. No, it's going to take lesser time. Third is also incorrect because it says that the proprietors and major shareholders will lose operational control. They will not lose it. So answer is option A. That only first is correct. This was all for today's session. I hope it was useful for you. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.